If you're familiar with Arcane Studios, then you know it's comprised of people who formerly worked at Looking Glass Studios, the team of people who created the Thief franchise. In 2012, Dishonored was released, a stealth action-adventure game published by Bethesda that felt very much like an updated Thief game. With some new mechanics and a totally unique art style, it ended up being one of the best FPS games of the year and truly one of the best stealth games to come along in a long while. In Dishonored, you take on the role of Corvo, a man returning to the city of Dunwall after spending months at sea searching for a cure to a horrible plague that has decimated the city. Corvo is back for no more than five minutes before the Empress is murdered by assassins, her daughter Emily is kidnapped, and Corvo is subsequently blamed, sent to jail for six months. Because it's totally believable that Corvo would kill the Empress, someone he served almost his entire life, within five minutes of getting back to the city. Anyway, that's the basic plot, and whilst in jail you learn it was all set up so the corrupt Lord Regent can assume control over the city. Corvo is then given the key to his cell through an anonymous package and escapes the jail before meeting up with the Loyalist group, who know he's innocent and seek to regain the throne for Emily by assassinating the key conspirators responsible for the death of the Empress. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with it. We've been building a coalition of Loyalists, aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny. Then on top of all of this, Corvo has a dream one night where he's visited by a mysterious figure known as the Outsider, who gives him magical powers for no real discernible reason. For this, I have chosen you, and drawn you into the void. Okay, talk about plot overload. Dishonor throws a lot of stuff at you within the first 15 minutes of the game. It kind of overdoes it in a way. But after this initial hurdle of just excess exposition, everything flows a lot smoother, and the plot progresses at a much better pace. The world of Dishonored is a grim and depressing one, where the city of Dunwall is infected by the horrible plague that has turned people into weepers, essentially zombies that bleed from their eyes. The citizens are kept at bay by the murderous weepers, swarms of rats, and the corrupt city watch, who enforce the curfew and patrol the streets with robotic walkers and lethal traps. Visually, the game looks like an oil painting in motion. There's no high-resolution textures or state-of-the-art visual effects, but the game runs more than adequately on the Unreal 3 engine, and the overall design and aesthetic is very appealing. During larger environments where you can see off into the horizon, the backdrop of Dunwall against a sunrise or sunset is picturesque. It's definitely a very unique-looking game. You're able to explore small sections of the city in each mission, where you can complete numerous little side missions in between downtime at the Hound Pits pub, which serves as the Loyalist HQ, where you can purchase new gear or just interact with NPCs. Furthermore, the main cast is made up of some well-known actors as well, like Michael Madsen, Susan Sarandon and Brad Dourif, as well as Chloe Moretz as the young Emily, who hands down gives the worst performance in the entire game. They, they, they told me you were head chopped off and in the prison, dead, like, like mother. Now the main focus of the game is on assassinating the targets throughout each of the main story missions, and this is done by either using traditional weaponry, or some of the magical powers bestowed upon you by the outsider. Weapons are standard fare, Corvo's got a sword that is always equipped in his right hand, then you've got a revolver, a crossbow, grenades and a couple of proximity mines that are equipped in the left. But it's the powers that truly steal the show here. Initially you're given a power called Blink, which lets you teleport short distances, letting you sneak up behind people to either execute or put them into a sleeper hold, or just to traverse areas more easily without being detected. Throughout the world you'll find these things called runes, which can be used to unlock and upgrade magical powers for Corvo to use, and these are both offensive and defensive. Dark Vision, for instance, will highlight enemies through walls and even show you their field of view. The Varying Swarm summons a hungry swarm of rats that will attack everything that gets in their way, useful for distracting or outright killing your enemies. Wind Blast will allow you to knock enemies back with a powerful blast of air. Shadow Kill will turn executed enemies into ash, preventing their bodies from being detected. And then lastly, and perhaps the most useful of all these powers, you've got Possession and Bend Time. Possession allows you to jump into the body of either a rat or a human and control them for a short period of time. Now this is handy with humans because you can easily possess someone, walk them into a nearby corner away from prying eyes and then just choke them out for an easy takedown. Bend Time is perhaps the most overpowered of all of Corvo's abilities, allowing you to literally stop time when it's fully upgraded to bypass otherwise difficult areas. One of my favourite things to do is to use this ability and take out a bunch of bad guys before time resumes and then just watch as they all drop to the ground like a bag of shit. Lastly, you can equip these things called Bone Charms, which give you passive buffs for your abilities. These again are found in the environment along with the runes. 
Now, like all good stealth games, Dishonored gives you the option of taking a lethal or non-lethal approach to completing your mission objectives. Your crossbow has sleeper darts, which are an instant knockout if you manage to get a headshot, and your choker hold more than does the trick at silently taking nearby guards out, letting you pick their bodies up and dump them in a dark corner somewhere. All of your assassination targets always have alternative methods that can be used instead of outright murder, what the game calls neutralizing. And discovering these methods often involves talking to NPCs or finding relevant documents within each mission area. Elements in the game are like alarm systems or traps can be turned on your enemies as well, so there's always more than one way to get the job done. Of course, if you want, you can just walk right in the front door and blow them away. That works fine too. You're given a score at the end of each mission showing how many times you're detected and how many people you kill. Now, even though you're not really penalized for killing people, what this does do is affect your chaos meter which will increase the amount of enemies present in subsequent levels, so taking a more stealthy approach really is the way to go. It's a shame too, because the combat in this game is so immensely satisfying. Your sword is always equipped in the right hand, so you're never defenseless, and if you time a block right, it leaves an enemy open for a counterattack that can kill them instantly. Even just switching in and out of weapons and powers in combat feels really smooth and gratifying. You really are unstoppable if you know what you're doing. Part of what makes Dishonored so much fun is replaying missions and taking different approaches to the combat or stealth. It really does offer up loads of different options. In between killing people, you can explore the area for pieces of gold or other valuables. One mission has you inside a large mansion during a masquerade party and while everyone is downstairs getting drunk, you're able to rummage around upstairs, stealing expensive paintings and going through secret stashes. It's at these moments where you can see where Dishonored takes its influences from the Thief games and these are great sections where you can crack into safes or pickpocket unaware guards and it seems every single mission is full of little nooks and crannies just waiting to be explored. I mean, I've finished the game probably half a dozen times now and I still find new things each playthrough. So what's wrong with this game? Well, that's a good question, Sonny Jim. I mean, I guess the stealth isn't as polished as I'd like, only because you're not given an indication of how hidden you are. Stealth mode is as simple as pressing the crouch button, but it would be nice to know if you're visible or not. As far as I can tell, it's dependent on whether or not you're in the light or the shadow, but this isn't entirely consistent. I also found Dishonored to be an extremely easy game, even on the so-called highest difficulty, only because some of the powers you're given really are just totally overpowered. Some people might say that the blink ability prevents the game from being a true stealth game, because you can literally just teleport right past groups of guards that you'd normally have to have spent a few minutes studying in any other similar game. If you're detected, it's much too easy just to kill everyone that comes at you, instead of running away for no good reason. There's really only one truly difficult section in this game towards the end when they take your gear away from you for a bit, but this is over pretty quickly anyway. Overall, there's really no good reason to not recommend this game, and it comes with some DLC that is actually worth playing as well. It's not quite the hardcore stealth experience that the Thief games were, but it is an enjoyable game where you can craft the type of character you want to be and explore limitless ways to complete your objectives. Combine the main campaign with the DLC and you're easily looking at 15 to 20 hours for a first time playthrough and that is damn good value. And for the stealth aficionados, this is definitely one worth checking out. Okay.